Hello and welcome to my top 25 cards from Wiles of Eldraine with the highest potential for standard. Coming in at number 25 we have Questing Druid, an updated take on the classic Quirion Dryad with the addition of a red adventure. It will likely be at its best in a deck that's mostly red with just a touch of green for some multicolor cards. The Druid is quite good in multiples, which is a good indicator for its constructed potential. Just make sure to use the adventure during the opponent's turn if you don't have a lot of mana, that way you'll be more likely to use all the exiled cards. Spiteful Hexmage is next on our list. At first glance this might seem like a 1 mana 1-1, one, one, but this human warlock has a few tricks up its sleeve. Combine it with Lord Skidder's Blessing to replace the Cursed Roll with a Wicked Roll and attack for 4 damage on turn 2 while also preparing to draw extra cards. Or we can sacrifice the Cursed Roll to a bargain card like Beseech the Mirror to search up everyone's favorite Phyrexian and put it straight onto the battlefield. Elusive Otter can be cast for 1 mana as a 1-1 creature with prowess and some added built-in evasion. Cheap prowess creatures have a good track record in constructed formats, and Blue has access to lots of cheap cantrips to enhance our furry friend. The Grove's Bounty Adventure gives this more late-game utility than Otter 1-drops. Moonshaker Cavalry has already been dubbed as the White Crater Hoof Behemoth, and it certainly packs a punch. Casting this for 8 mana is going to be difficult, so reanimating it from the graveyard is maybe the next best way to get it on the battlefield. The main thing holding it back is Atraxa being the better card to cheat into play, but time will tell if we can erase the spirit. Monstrous Rage is a 1 mana pump spell with a lasting effect. Red decks can use this to get 3 extra damage in while also granting a creature plus 1 plus 1 and trample in future turns. The Aura Roll also counts as a modification, so it could also pair well alongside some of the red and green payoffs from Kamigawa. At number 20 we have Gruff Triplets, a certified bomb in limited, but will it carry over to 60 card formats? It does have excellent synergy with Mondrag, not only doubling its tokens, but also possibly giving us a sacrifice outlet to pump up every other copy. It is still vulnerable to board wipes, and with Sunfall and Farewell both exiling our creatures, even an indestructible Mondrag won't be safe. Twining Twins has what it takes to get your wins. The Swift Spiral Adventure gives us a versatile blink effect that has many great use cases. This includes flickering the various prototype creatures from the Brothers War, such as Comet Thresher. And then the Vigilant Flyer also gets around the minus 2 ability from the Wandering Emperor, so that's another nice upside. Lord Skitter, Sewer King, can often immediately make a 1-1 rat token the turn you play it. Every rat also acts as a graveyard hate, and Wilds of Eldraine introduces plenty of synergies with rat tokens, and Lord Skitter gives us a remarkable reservoir of rodents. Elvish Archivist is an interesting take on the classic Enchantress creature by also growing whenever an artifact enters a battlefield under our control. Gala Greeters could pair quite nicely with the Archivist to generate those artifacts, although striking a balance between artifacts and enchantments could prove to be tricky. Focusing on either one might be the way to go, and any way of enabling it in the opponent's turn will also increase its potential. The Goose Mother reminds us of Hydroid Crasis. While not quite on the same level, this bird Hydra still provides immediate value when it enters a battlefield, while setting us up to draw extra cards. Decent at any point on our curve, but at its best in either a ramp or food strategy. Ashiok Wicked Manipulator is the only Planeswalker in Wilds of Eldraine. The plus one ability generates card advantage, while the minus two provides us with a pair of nightmare tokens that can keep growing over time. Casting an adventure card is another way of satisfying those nightmares even after Ashiok is gone, and there's a pretty good one further up on our list. Sleight of Hand is back in standard for the first time since 9th edition. This adds another 1 mana cantrip for various blue decks, and since it doesn't technically draw a card, it also gets around the life loss from Shieldred. Royal Treatment is another 1 mana instant on this list that creates a roll token. It compares favorably to Snakeskin Veil vale and similar tricks in the past, so the main question is whether it's good enough to replace Tyvar's Stand as the protection spell of choice. Witchstalker Frenzy offers a solution to a recurring problem for a lot of red decks. With enough attackers, this can be a 1 mana answer to Shieldred, which is a very efficient rate. 
Don't forget that this count also applies during the opponent's turn, so there are multiple opportunities to cast it on the cheap. Talion's Messenger is one of the better payoffs for a fairy deck in Standard, providing card selection and plus one plus one counters. Unlike Connive, we still get a counter when discarding a land, so we can keep all those spells in hand. Paired with counter spells like Spell Stutter and other cheap fairies such as Obira and the Fairy Dream Thief, this deck could easily turn into something akin to the Rogues deck from a couple standard rotations ago. Where Fox Bodyguard comes in at number 10, a Banisher Priest with Flash offers a lot of flexibility and can slot into a variety of archetypes. It does potentially fight over the same slot as Brutal Cathar, which may remain the preferred choice for Soldier decks, but other white decks now have more options to choose from. Talion, the Kindly Lord, asks us to name a number between 1 and 10. If we choose carefully, we might be rewarded with extra cards. Pair this with targeted discard spells, and we can take some of the guesswork out of the equation. While it may not replace Shieldred, some decks could potentially run both. As a legend, it can also slot into the Esper Legends deck, and the Fairy subtype could also be relevant. Mosswood Dread Knight could be the perfect card for Golgari Greatness, a recursive threat that also provides card advantage through its adventure. It will ask the opponent a simple question, can they exile it? Virtue of Loyalty can first make a Knight token at instant speed, and it gives us the option of casting a very powerful enchantment as the game goes on. This can give aggro decks a useful tool to pump up the entire team once the board stalls out a bit, and with an instant speed adventure it could also slot into a blue-white flash deck where you can mix threats with instant speed interaction. Decadent Dragon does a pretty decent goldspan dragon impression. While it lacks haste and the mana doubling effect, it does come with an adventure that can provide extra card advantage, assuming we have the right colors to cast the exiled cards. The treasure tokens can of course be a big help in doing so. Virtue of Courage is another mythic rare enchantment with an adventure. Embereth Blaze deals 2 damage to any target, and a red burn deck with a slightly higher curve could then resolve the enchantment to string together a bunch of burn spells to win the game. Both halves of the card can also trigger prowess on your Monastery Swiss Spear, and Virtue of Courage is also quite good in multiples, ensuring that you'll never run out of things to cast with your mana. The Iron Crag is the first 2 mana ramp artifact in standard in over 10 years. Enabling your 4 drops on turn 3, no matter which colors you are playing, is a very powerful effect. While it is legendary, at least we do have the flexibility of turning it into an equipment once we cast a legendary creature. This will be an instant staple in almost every brawl deck, but even standard decks will have a hard time turning it down if it fits their game plan. Charming Scoundrel offers a lot of flexibility. Much like the Iron Crag, this can help you cast a 4-drop on turn 3, but in an aggressive red deck you might be more interested in enchanting a creature with the Wicked Roll token to push more damage. This could easily replace a Bloodthirsty Adversary in a lot of decks, as the Wicked Roll also deals 1 extra damage on the way out. At number 2 we have another mythic rare adventure enchantment. Lochthwain's Corn is a solid removal spell for 2 mana, gaining us some extra life in the process, and once we reach the later stages of the game, Virtue of Persistence can take over by reanimating any creature turn after turn. For my number 1 pick, I'm cheating a little bit since I'm including all 5 of the new creature lands. While they do enter tapped, each and every one of these creature lands has the potential of making the difference in a grindy matchup. They all have varying activation costs and provide a wide range of abilities, and building mana bases for multicolored decks just got a whole lot more interesting. This concludes my top 25. Agree or disagree? Let me know in the comments if I missed any important cards. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.